everybody, welcome back to Wow Mom Cooking. Today is our Christmas episode and it is being brought to you by Harry and David. If you go on to wowmomcooking.com or wowmomcooking.tv, you will find their link. And they have free delivery on no minimum purchase right now, code word SPARKLE. Remember to go on through my site and that's how you're gonna find them with that code. So today we are going to be making a Christmas dinner. So grab your pens, your papers, and your aprons and let's get cooking with Wow. started on this grown-up Christmas dinner. We are going to make a bone-in prime rib, some potatoes, some spinach, and maybe a salad too. What I've done already is I brought this prime rib to room temperature. You want to do that either way. What I first did was I put this in a buttermilk brine. You can do that without putting it in the buttermilk brine. It's up to you. And I've already started putting some uh, garlic on here and some black pepper. I did rinse it after I took it out of the buttermilk brine and patted it dry and now it's ready for all of our crusty seasonings that we're going to put on, on all over the whole thing. We're starting with the bone side. I've got a little bit on there already. We're going to add a little bit more. I'm going to rub it in. Then we're going to flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. And when we get everything on here we want. We're going to cook it just like you see it. We're going to cook it with the fat side down and the bones up in the air. Okay, we're also going to add to this some granulated onion. We're going to be liberal with it. And we're going to do some granulated garlic. It smells good already. And we're also going to do some smoked sea salt. And that's a little bit different than what I normally use. It has a nice smoky flavor. And it's going to add quite a bit to this. Try and get it on all the sides too. Okay. Once we get this rubbed in a little bit, we're going to flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. Okay. We're going to use the rest of our pepper and crushed sliced dried garlic. We'll give that a little rub around. We'll add some more of the onion and we'll add some more of this garlic. Okay, rub it one more time and then we're going to finish it off with more of that smoked sea salt on this side. Okay, now you can see it looks like it has a lot of seasoning on it, which is really good because we want it to soak up all that flavor and be even more delicious when we take it out. So we're going to put it fat side down, which is this side down, leaving the strings on. And what we're going to do is let it sit here and soak up all these nice wonderful flavors we just put on here while the oven warms up. We are going to warm our oven up to 500 degrees. I know it sounds hot, but this is how it works. You put this in the oven at 500 for 30 minutes, then you turn the oven off and you do not look at it for the next 90 minutes. It'll reach temperature, it'll be delicious, it'll have all its juices inside, and you won't lose all that yumminess when you slice into it. So that's what we're going to do next, and then I'm going to come back and show you how to make the potatoes. So I'm taking the prime rib right now. We're going to put it in and I'll see you in a bit. So our prime rib is in the oven. It needs to cook at 500 for 30 minutes. So while it does that, we are going to get ready on our potato dish here. We are going to make some shredded potatoes that we're going to make into little potato cakes and they are going to be delicious. And I'm also going to show you a little bit different way to make these than what you normally would. So we're going to use our microplaner and we're going to shred us some potatoes. Now I leave the skins on. Not everybody does. I just like the way they taste. They think they're delicious. I think they add something to it. We're going to do this with five potatoes. That should be enough to make what we need for um, uh, serving probably six to eight people with that prime rib. 
So, now see these make nice little shreds. These are gonna be delicious. We're gonna put some onion in here too. So let me show you with the onion. We're gonna do the same thing. Slice and peel this guy. And we're gonna use our microplaner on that too. So you have about the same consistency on the onion. Now you can do it all at once or you can mix them together. I like to do a little bit at a time because I want the onion to be flavored throughout. So we're gonna do a little bit of onion, a little bit of potato. We're gonna switch back and forth. Then when it's all done, we're gonna wring this out to get all the water out so that you don't have any sparks flying when you put this in your, in your hot oil. So I'm gonna to continue to do this. Go back and forth and I'll show you guys. And then we'll wring it out and we'll move on to our next step. Okay, we have all of our potatoes and all of our onions chopped, microplaned. They look beautiful. We're gonna give it a little stir just to make sure that everything is mixed up really well. And then we're gonna do something most people don't know about. Let me move these out of the way. Grab a bowl that I already have sitting here with a towel in it. And what we are going to do is put all of this in here and we're gonna wring this out because there's a lot of water in there. When you put water into hot oil, not a good mixture. So what we are going to do, fold this all up as tight as we can and we're gonna do this like a piece of old candy, old uh, salt water taffy. We're gonna start giving it a ring and you're gonna see all this water come out. See that? Lots and lots of water coming out of here. Okay, we're gonna give it one more good ring and then we're gonna set it aside. And I'm going to show you, first I'll show you the potatoes. See that? They look a lot drier, a lot better. We're gonna get rid of this bowl. I'm gonna bring out my secret weapon, my little secret I said I was gonna tell you about on how to cook these. So let me get rid of this. Let me clean up this counter a little bit and then we're gonna move on. Okay, so I'll be right back. We've got our much drier potatoes in a bowl. We're gonna add our dry seasoning now, mix it up, and then I'm gonna show you our secret weapon, which is an electric skillet. It's sitting on the countertop and it works beautifully. So let's get going on this. I've got, of course, freshly ground black peppercorns. And we are going to put a little bit of onion powder. We're gonna try and stay with the same kind of flavors that are gonna be with our prime rib so that everything complements each other and makes it even better. We've got our granulated garlic. We're not using fresh because it's wet this time. So we don't want it to be wet. We want everything to be a little bit drier so that it all sticks together a little better. And we've got our smoked sea salt again. Now, if you're gonna use the same seasonings you used while you were touching your raw meat, make sure you wash the outside of your seasoning jars before you move on to your next thing. When I cleaned everything up, hands got cleaned, seasoning jars got cleaned, and everything is all terrific now. Okay, we've got our salt, we've got our pepper, we've got our uh, garlic and onions, and we are going to mix this. This looks and smells delicious already. Now we are going to set this aside and I'm gonna show you our secret weapon. So let me move this out of the way. Here is our electric skillet. This was my mother's, she gave it to me. It's probably about 30 years old and still works amazingly. Has a cover if you need it, doesn't have to have it, don't have to use it. You can see it's a couple inches deep and it sits right on your countertop, has a little controller for how hot you wanna be on the side, and we are going to set this to what it calls sear. It's 400 degrees, we wanna get this oil nice and hot. We're gonna put just a little bit of olive oil at the bottom, and you know me, I always use my garlic olive oil when we're doing something like potatoes or something all, that garlic always complements, which is almost everything. So we'll get it in here, we'll get it heated up, and then we're gonna put our potatoes in. Let's get a little bit more. We 
We don't want to set this whole potato cake into the oil. We want it to kind of just be touching the bottom of it because we want the inside to still be creamy, but we want the outside to be crunchy when it's all finished. Okay. Now you can see we have just a little bit of the olive oil in there. It's moving around, it's already getting warm. And the way that you can test if this is getting warm is just take a little piece of your potato. Take one little piece before we make a potato cake. And as soon as you start to think it's getting warm, when you drop it in, it'll start to sizzle. Now ours isn't quite ready yet. It started to sizzle a little bit after I put it in there, so we need to give it just another minute to get going. And while we're doing that, I can show you we are going to get just about this much of each of our potato cakes. We're going to pat them down right over our bowl. It's starting to, starting to heat up there. We want to pat them together so that they start to hold. And then we're going to place them into the hot oil. And there we go. Now it's starting to go. I can see it bubbling. Let's give it one more test. Definitely heard that one start. So this is ready to go. We're going to set these right in here. You can hear that little bit of a sizzle. That's exactly what you want. That means that your oil is just perfect and just ready to go. Okay. We can probably do about four of these at once. We don't want to do more than that because we don't want to cool our oil down. And we don't want to have trouble flipping them. Now we're going to leave each one of these in the oil for about two to three minutes on each side. We definitely don't want to mess with them too much because you don't want to break them up. You want them to get that nice crispy, crispy outside to them. So we're going to let them do that and then we'll come back and flip them and I'll show you what it looks like in just a minute. Our potato cakes are just ready to flip. Oh, perfect. They're golden brown and they look like they're going to be delicious. Now, the nice thing about this is this little handle that I'm holding on to does not get hot. It's great. You can hold on, move things around. You could use this skillet on your kitchen counter if your other burners are already taken and you need something else to do. Or if you're saying you're having, you live in California like me, and you're going to have a Christmas outside and you still want to do things like you want to fry something up or you want to saute some onions and some mushrooms for something, take this outside, plug it in and use it. They are great. I completely, totally recommend it. If your mom has one that she doesn't use anymore, ask her if you can borrow it. You'll start using it and you will never give it back, I guarantee. These need about another minute on this side to get that nice creamy inside and that nice crunchy outside. So we're gonna let that happen. And then after this, we're also gonna show you how to make cream spinach. Delicious, my husband loves it, and I know he's gonna love this dinner when we're all done. So hang on just a minute, let's get these going. And then I will show you also one little thing that my family loves for me to do with these. It's a little extra. When we take them out and we put them on a tray so that they can cool, we are going to add a little bit of grated cheese. Got some right here. They love it. Makes these things just a little bit more tasty and everybody loves cheese. Well, everybody should love cheese. Let's see. Oh, this one is just perfect. I'm going to take this out, put it onto our cookie sheet. Got a little bit of wax paper there to put it on so they don't stick. We don't have any trouble. And it makes it easier for me to put that grated Parmesan. Well, actually, we're using Romano today, some grated Romano cheese. While they're still nice and warm, we are going to put some of this cheese on there. It's really simple. A little bit fast there. And we're going to let them sit while we make the rest of them. So here we go again. Take a little handful, squish it over your bowl so you don't get any of that water going into your pan, and put them right in. You can hear that sizzle. Very simple but very delicious. These are great for dinner. You can use them for breakfast. Um, if you want to have a little German flair, you can serve them with either some sour cream or some applesauce. Applesauce is actually delicious with these things. Every time I go to Oktoberfest, 
I eat these with applesauce and I cannot get enough. So I'm gonna finish these up and then we'll be back. Okay, on to our spinach. We are going to use our little nifty secret weapon again. The electric skillet is set to boil, which is a kind of an odd setting, but it's at about 250 degrees. It has little different kinds of things on there because it's old. So let's see, we have a full stick of butter. We're gonna set it in here. We wanna keep it, uh, get it to start melting. I'll get one of my little tools out here. It'll melt pretty fast because I've cut it up into little, probably about um, tablespoon size slices. And into this, while it melts away, we are going to put some shallots. We're gonna use our microplaner again because it's fast and easy. Gives us small pieces, and that way it'll incorporate with the spinach better. one. Once this starts to melt and we get all this in here, we're going to add our other seasonings. We are going to put some garlic in here. We're going to put more of that smoked sea salt and some ground peppercorns, of course. And what we want to do is get this in here nice and steamy and get it going. And then we're going to put the spinach on top of it and cover it with the lid. That way it will cook just beautifully. Okay. That's perfect for our shallot. Let's give it a little stir. Butter's almost melted. Starting to sizzle a little, which is perfect. We're gonna use our refrigerated, already uh, ready to go squeeze garlic. And put about a tablespoon in, a little bit less than that actually. And then we're going to add our garlic, sliced dried garlic and peppercorn mix into that, and some of our smoked sea salt. Okay, we're gonna give this a good stir. We want it to get nice and heated up. This smells really good. This would be good to just dip some bread in. Nice, crusty, hard Italian bread straight out of the oven. That would be delicious. Now I want you to be able to see that this is starting to steam. So I'm gonna put this on for a second. What I have here is a full bag of fresh washed spinach. It's dry. We don't wanna put it in there wet. We want it to be nice and dry and that's fine. It's gonna be just perfect for us. And ready for the magic? It's gonna come when I take this off, you're gonna see steam and that's exactly what we want because that's what we want it to do to our spinach. See that? That is perfect. It is steaming and ready to go. So we're gonna pile this in. Definitely gonna stir it around just a little bit because we want all those seasonings to get on there. Okay, put the rest of it in. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this lid on here for a couple minutes. We're gonna let it steam really good. Then we're gonna stir it up again and then we're gonna add the cream to make this into a creamed spinach. It's gonna be delicious. It's gonna add some color and be beautiful on your plate with your potatoes and your prime rib that is now in the oven with the oven off. And remember, it continues to cook for 90 minutes after you turn that oven off and do not open it. That's the trick. You want the heat to stay in there and everything to stay together don't peek, all right? So we'll be back in just a minute to show you what the spinach looks like. See that beautiful steam? Mmm, that means it is doing its job. Let's open this up, take a look, and see if it's ready. Oh, that is just about perfect. We're gonna give this a good stir. Make sure all those seasonings are everywhere. Even for those who don't like spinach, you would like this. It tastes delicious. Okay. It is just about ready for us to add that cream sauce in. 
Okay, we've got some heavy cream. We're only gonna put a little bit in at a time. So we're gonna put a little bit in and stir it because we don't want it to turn into like a spinach soup. We just want it to have a little bit of a creamy texture to it and creamy flavor. So a little bit more. We'll probably only end up with about three or four tablespoons at the most in this. And then what we're gonna do once it looks just about right is we're gonna cover it back up and let it simmer for a couple more minutes. Let's see, just a touch more. Okay, that looks like it's perfect. Give it a good stir. Okay, now what we're gonna do is turn this down just a little bit to about 200. We don't want it to burn, we just want it to simmer and soak everything up. We are gonna cover this back up, let it sit here for a couple more minutes, and then it's gonna be ready to eat. So I will show you a completed plate with all of our stuff in just a little bit. Our meal is all finished. The prime rib is delicious. Look at this, it looks beautiful. I have our tomato salad, which I said I was gonna throw it together. It's just some heirloom tomatoes chopped up with some blue cheese dressing, a little bit of shallots, and a little bit of olive oil and vinegar. I have our creamed spinach. I've got our potato cake with the sour cream, and I made a little bit of uh, pear sauce instead of applesauce. I'll put the recipe up on the website for that. And here is our delicious looking prime rib. I'm ready to taste this, so let's see how we did. Slice right through it very easily. I bet it's real tender. Mmm. And the flavor, delicious. Let's give a little taste to our pear sauce and apple. Uh, sorry, pear sauce instead of apple with our potato. Mmm. Perfect combination. I got people waiting for me for this dinner, so I'm gonna head out of here. I wanna say, Thank you again for hanging with me on Wow Mom Cooking today. Until next time, check us out on our website, wowmomcooking.com or Wow Mom Cooking TV. And don't forget to check out the uh, Harry and David. You got free shipping right now on any size order. Keyword is sparkle. See you next time and everyone have a Merry Christmas.